B-Bad and Brandon. We got uh, Brandon's clicking some buttons. That's my, <laughs> that's my boy Brandon, bro, the other half of the show. And uh, there we go. We got you on our big screen, bro. Now, if uh, that show you a bit away for everyone. Your podcast looks good. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, bro. Did you have a chance to check out a couple episodes? No, bro. I've been working a lot. Yep. And I've been training. Yep. I, yep. I check out on, on, on Spotify. And yep. saw that you guys have a lot of, have done a, a lot of, of podcasts. Yep. yep. And yeah, but I didn't have a chance to listen. I'm, I'm sorry. That's all right, bro, mate. You can know uh, there's plenty to choose from. I think we're up to 140 yeah, something there something, now. Yeah. So when you get some of that magic spare time, that'll keep you nice and busy, bro. Now I think, um, mate, the shirt gives it away for those sitting at home watching this, but there are some people listening in. We do ask one question and then the rest of that show is just chaos for us. And it is 21 words, who you are and what do you do? My name is Felipe Cavalcante. I have been doing Jiu-Jitsu since 1996. Uh, it makes like 25 years. <laughs> I'm a black belt fourth degree. And I, on the last 25 years, I have, I have been in a lot of places and I have lived in five different countries and teach Jiu-Jitsu. Great people like you in all those five different countries. Yeah, wow. Damn, I think that was 21 words. Too. I think it was too, but how do you, I've, for someone who has no, like I've It never, was a lot, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I've never really delved into the jiu-jitsu world or martial arts in general. Like I assumed that when it was black belt, it was just black belt, but you're telling me there's a, like the degrees to that as well. Yeah. That's yeah. Insane. After, after three years, you get, you get your first degree and it's like until the third degree is every three years, and after the third degree is like every five years. So yeah, wow. after certain time, you get a different degree on your belt. Damn. I got four. Yeah, no big oh. deal. <laughs> that means he's badass. Bro. Yeah, I was like, is there is there many people? How's the training, John? You have been training, mate. Um, look, let's just say the unfortunately the purple belt is in the cupboard at the moment with uh business life uh now a dad life and uh coaching but i did get back on the mats last year um and trained which was good and the goal is to pull that thing back on there sometime in the new year so time is not finished with jujitsu that's okay. that's for sure it's just uh fucking life and priorities unfortunately gets in the way mm. Yeah, that's that's important. But, but I'll man. be checking with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mate, I still I still have all my memories pop up that I love to tag you in from back in the day when I used to train with you, bro. And um Yeah, I, I love those memories too, bro. Such and, a and, such a good time. Yeah, bro. And you would remember um Dr. Paul? Yeah, of course. How could forget him? He's so big. Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, he got um he proudly got his brown belt um not long ago at last grading from Gaha. Which um yeah, man, if it wasn't for our time spent with you in the early days, mate, with fumbling around and not having a clue what we were doing, neither of us and particularly Paul, we wouldn't be here with if it wasn't for you teaching us and showing us the craft, bro. You, you know, essentially yeah. the passion for yeah, that's jiu-jitsu. one thing that I like. Yeah. I was yeah. gonna say essentially that's the passion one for thing jiu-jitsu I like about you too is the dedication. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Like it's, it, I, I could, I could see the dedication in different ways yep. because you were more like, you were like more competitor and you already had like a good fitness level and you're pushing your limits. Yep. And he was a doctor who wants to get fit and he was in a bad shape when he came to my classes. Yep. And he was like, even if he was bad shape, he was in pain. He was getting tired all the time, but he was pushing. Mm. Yep. And you were like trying to get on a high level competition and were pushing like like yep. different like different lifestyles, different like uh how can I say different directions, but one wants to improve fitness, another yep. wants to go to competition, but they have the dedication in common. Yep. Mm. That must be um a pretty cool part of your job as a as a coach there, bro, you know, seeing so many different personalities and reasons to be on that map, but essentially 
crafting them and molding them in their directions. That must be pretty cool. You would have come along a di- lot of different reasons over the years. Yes, yeah. It's like uh, I changed it a lot. Like I, uh, I think like the best, the best thing I can do is try to inspire people to, to get mm. a better like a better lifestyle. Like inspire. Like I, I teach I teach kids class too, so I can inspire those kids to uh, be a better human being. I can yeah. inspire those those kids to be a, to behave better at home. So the benefits of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is uh i'm not only competition mm. when when you met me i was very into competition that yeah. that that's you're that still competing yourself as well more. yeah and now i believe like i uh, i'm trying to do everything like even especially self-defense for women yep and, and kids because they are the one who most need it yep. so yeah and improve people's life people's life i think like getting confidence and improving someone's life through jiu-jitsu is is is, is more important than, than than winning a gold medal in my opinion yeah that that must be that's a pretty cool to, way to explain it bro like you must see that with kids in its simplest form that that young kid who's perhaps been a bit picked on he's very low or she's very low on confidence and you know, they spend some time with yourself and in that kids class, you know, they gain that confidence, but also they, they gain some friends. They get to meet a, a, a community. Real, a, a, they get their own community. That must be a, a pretty cool experience for you, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Kids class is one of my, my favorite classes and, yep. and, and try to, to make them all get along together is, is kind of a challenge. But that's, <laughs> I can that's, imagine. That's not optional. Yep. They, my classes that that's not an option they have to get along together they have yep. to do what i say yep. and, and otherwise they cannot be there I, I i don't accept bullying i don't accept discrimination yep and it's 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 kind of challenging sometimes but it's yep. it's nice to see the final result everyone getting along and everyone doing jiu-jitsu and learning jiu-jitsu yep and eventually going to a competition it's yep. it's, it's, it's 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 really it's really good yep and Ben, so you said 1996, was that the first time you started when you started jujitsu yourself personally? Yeah, it was, was January 12th, 5 p.m. of 1996. And I that was because your... they have a sign at the gym of the first class. Yep. <laughs> Wait, what was that like work, walking into your first class in the home of jujitsu, bro? Man, I went with my friends. Yep. My friends told me that I was like, Jiu Jitsu was coming. Like, Jiu Jitsu was really new on my on my hometown. Yep. And we were learning Jiu Jitsu from a purple belt. It was, yep. The instructor wasn't even a black belt. Yep. So I was excited. I was, I did swimming for a long time. Yep. And I was kind of searching for sports that I could go to a competition and I yep. could be good. And because I always enjoy that part of I'm a very competitive person yep. and hyperactive hmm. so I was looking for something like that and like my parents told me about jiu-jitsu and I well, was like one week ago I had uh, uh, I read about Hicks and Grace in a magazine yeah. I was so excited about jiu-jitsu yep, yep. and I was lucky to jiu-jitsu come near to my house at, yep. in that gym near to my house and I started and was like, I was feeling like Hicks on Grace on the first day, but I got <laughs> smashed all, yeah. all over again, <laughs> so many times. <laughs> but I, she was really excited about to something new. Yep. And it was my first combat sport. Yep. I had done swimming and soccer, but it was my first combat sport. And yep. like, even then, I got beat up on the first day and yep. the, the whole first month and the second month. <laughs> I was still very excited. Yeah. that's awesome that's what i was the smallest guy i was the smallest guy in the room yep oh fuck yeah because um what would you have weighed back then how old were you when you started I was 15 yeah wow I was like 58 kilograms 58 wow. kilos jesus and no doubt there would have been some monsters in that class yeah 
yeah, some some people are bigger than you, so yep. really strong. Yep. Um, but this experience of being smashed by those guys were like way bigger than me, like thirty or thirty five kilograms uh, bigger than me, heavier, and that experience helping me on my first competition because I smashed everyone, I smashed mm. everyone on my weight division. Mm. So okay. was it wasn't like. It wasn't like cool being smashed every single day, but it worked really well on, on, on my first competition. Yep. And after I started learning more and yep. getting stronger, uh, uh, the, I wasn't getting smashed so much. Yep. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. So, yeah, just the beginning was pretty rough, but it was, it was worth it. Unreal. And it was obviously, like you said, you've, you've always had that quest for competition, bro. Um, was as soon as you you started training jujitsu, was it a matter of like, yeah, this is my thing. This is what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I I had this I had this I had this this image in my mind of teaching jujitsu, learning jujitsu, and teaching jujitsu in different countries since the yep. first day. I visualized that on my mind. Yep. That I could. I could I could learn something and travel to different countries. Yep. Teaching jiu-jitsu. And yep. I had the idea that I would go to Hawaii. Yeah. That's my, <laughs> my first place, but I never been to Hawaii. I've been a lot of different places, but I never been to Hawaii. But I had this image on my mind. Yep. That I really yeah, I saw like that article about Pixon Grace that I yep. told you. Yep. And I was reading that he was traveling to different places and yep. he was challenging on other fighters. Yep. And I got it was something really cool. Like I couldn't I couldn't I, I couldn't imagine something cooler than that. Yeah. I was I was seeing that as oh, you know, I wanna be like this guy. I wanna, yep. <laughs> I wanna be like Hickson Gracie. And then yep. like uh, I started in I couldn't stop I couldn't think on another another thing like yep. and yeah. after i started it got worse i was thinking about you just 24 hours <laughs> seven days a week yep, yep. and training, then training twice I'm, a day every I'm class you could be at it got better i don't think about you all the time but most of the time <laughs> <laughs> damn and were, were you always competing as a young fella like through your teenage years is that you you always strive to compete and challenge yourself against the other people in the other yeah, parts of the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I used to, yeah, I used to compete a lot on my hometown, but sometimes yep. I have to go to another state to compete. Yep. And I did not have like a lot of money. Yep. We did not have sponsors at that yep. time. And then I used to, I used to sleep at the gyms. I used to sleep on friends' place. Sometimes yep. sleep in the hotel. Yeah. But I was always, I was always going to competitions. So I was yep. like. Sometimes with friends, sometimes with people from my gym, yep. sometimes with people from other gym, sometimes yep. by myself. Yep. But I was always, always going, always competing. Yep. That's unreal, bro. And that sort of passion for travel, that's always been there with you, bro? Yeah. Yeah. I I love traveling. I, I like to, to, to... I'm a very curious, curious person. Yep. That's all that makes me go to competitions because I, I want to know what's going to happen. Yep. If, if I stay at home, I will never find out mm. what that moment could be. Yep. And the same thing for places. If I stay at home, I will never find out what this, what this place looks like, what people behave, what they eat, mm. what they, how, how they do things. So yep. I, I'm, I always have the curiosity. And yep. That's what moves me. Like, uh, think i get excited very easily sometimes and that's one of the reasons why i like uh, traveling and fighting yep that's yeah, awesome can... how many countries have you been to now you said five or you lived in five countries i live in five countries like uh, new zealand australia australia uh, uae mm-hmm. and the united arab emirates yep United States and I spent one month in Thailand, so it yep. oh wow, yeah. <laughs> but I have been 15 countries, I have been 50 countries like for competition and sometimes just traveling, yeah. So I have been 15, 
15, 15 countries. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So a lot more than I have. Yeah, that's way more than mine, bro. How did that um, first opportunity come up for you to coach overseas? Was that something you, like you said, from a, a junior, junior there, your, your goal was to go to Hawaii, but your first step ended you up in New Zealand. How did you get to that, bro? So, like, I never got an opportunity to teach to, to leave my hometown. I yep. had to make it happen. Yep. I, I, I didn't know any English. Yep. I didn't, I couldn't speak any English, so I couldn't get, I couldn't get any job. Yep. So I had a friend who was a doctor in New Zealand. Yep. And he, he told me, I, I told him that I was thinking about going to Australia. Yep. To, to study, study English, and then try to find something with Jiu Jitsu. And he said, no, why don't you try to come to New Zealand? I'm there and I can yep. help you. Perfect. So I went first to New Zealand. And yep. I, I bought the ticket and I, I went to New Zealand and stayed with me some time. Yep. And then I got a job, which my first job wasn't with Jiu Jitsu because I couldn't speak any English. Yep. But, uh, and then after some time, I started working with Jiu Jitsu. Yep. yep. But, like but I, I didn't have an opportunity. I had to make it happen. And yeah. I was, I was really young at the time when I left. And yep. I was very didn't have much experience so I was very navy yep and I had I had I had to I had to make it happen like, yep. like at some of teammates are going to United States to join the American top team yep and I was hoping to get one, one opportunity like that but the, the opportunity was never coming from me just for yep. the people so yep. I decided okay these guys are going this way I'm going to the other way yeah go the other way so really. I had I had to make it happen Yep. Yeah, so, I had to make it happen. Otherwise, it, I was I would, I would be assumed on my hometown. Yeah, I think that's unreal. Like that, that attitude of you creating your own opportunities is just incredible, bro. Hundred percent. Yeah. Like, I, I would like to go. Like, I would like to have like to go to the America top team. Like some of them went. Like, yep. but as I said, like I think. The, the opportunity wasn't coming and mm. maybe it would take too long and I, I didn't want to stay on my hometown anymore. Yep. Mm. And I was feeling that my life was the same and I was training a lot, but yep. I was training just for training. Like, yep. like I was competing mostly just on my hometown. Yep. And like it got a, in a point that it, it wasn't enough for me anymore. So I, mm. I didn't want to wait. And I, I met this guy, like with my friend that, invite me to go there and he said he would help and he would, he would help me mm. and he did so he said like let's, let's do it let's let's do it i'm i'm just said oh there you're back mm. okay. so Sorry, did you did you do yeah. any coaching so, jiu -jitsu so, yeah, in i'm not gonna i'm not gonna sit here wait mm. did you me? do any coaching jiu-jitsu in new zealand while you were there or was it when you got to australia yeah, and I did. coaching i did and i I did, and I taught some seminars too. Yep. Mm. Yep. But so it would have been pretty early days for at that time in New Zealand. Been. They didn't have any competitions. Yep. Yep. Yeah, they didn't have any. They didn't have much competitions in New Zealand at that time. Yep. And I wanted to compete. Yep. And also, I, I was teaching, but it wasn't a, like a full time job. Yep. Yep. And I decided like that I could have to go to Australia because in Australia could have better opportunities, like bigger opportunities. Mm. The market for BJJ is bigger over yep. there. So that's why I moved to from New Zealand to Australia. But yep. I also didn't have any job. I find yep. a job when I was there. I had friends. <laughs> that's something good that helps if you want to travel. Yeah, with my Mate, I love that attitude of yours. Like, I don't have a job there yet, but I want to go there. So I'll go there and then I'll just make it work when I get there. Yeah. Like, as I say, that's not the best way, but it has to be like that. Yeah. It's like, it's like travel alone. It's yeah. not the best way, but it has to be, I do it. Yep. And yep. So, yeah, it's, it's, I, I wasn't getting any younger. I wasn't getting any better staying in my hometown. Yep. And I wasn't in a, I wasn't, I was bored. I wasn't making much money. Yep. Uh, people have to, we cannot forget that Brazil is a poor country. Yeah, for it's sure. A, 
is this like so i finished i finished my studies i couldn't get a good job with a decent pay mm. and i said hey, I, I have to make things happen mm. Uh, mm. i don't want to be poor forever <laughs> yeah 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 so yeah i just then i moved to new zealand 100 percent. how did you enjoy your time in new zealand did you get a much opportunity to travel around the countryside as well, bro, and see much of the town place. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. I, 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 I went to a lot of places. I did some seminars, mm. and I also got jobs in different places. Yep. And it was it was a good time. They, 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 it's a beautiful country. They have a good hospitality, mm. and I had, I had, I had, a, I had, a, I had a good time of that. Like I have students there that. They're trying to bring me for a seminar, but it's so it's so distant, right? Yep. Australia, New Zealand, the other side of the world. Yeah. So I didn't have the opportunity yet, but for sure I will come back to Australia and New Zealand. You'll, you'll be back for sure, hundred percent. And then next part of your journey got you in Australia. I miss um, the, I miss this accent. I miss yeah. this accent. Hundred percent, bro. And then yeah, the next part of your journey got you to Australia. Spent most of your time here in Brisbane. Yeah, I spent most most of my time in Perth. In Perth, uh, like yeah. I have to spend more time in Queensland because yeah. I, I didn't like Perth so much, and I love I love it, Brisbane. Like, mm. it's, well, it's it's my favorite city, and Queensland is it's just beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Everyone is so relaxed, and then people are always smiling. Yep, it's a completely different atmosphere from from Perth. So yes, I. I wish I could have spent more time in Queensland. Mm. I just spent one year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. But it was a, was a, I think, I believe one of the best years of my life. Like I oh, wow. really, I have Queensland and Brisbane in a special place in my heart. Mm. Yeah, right. Glad to come back, man. Yeah, hell yeah. How did you find the um the the jujitsu when you got here versus coming from from Brazil? Like. You like the, the level of skill, you know, the level of skill stuff, and what, what people's knowledge, general knowledge was here versus back home and what sort of gaps did you sort of bring to sort of fix for it for, as a coach to, for the clubs? It was, it was 2010. Yep. 2010. So Jiu-Jitsu in Australia at that time was, excuse me, Jiu-Jitsu in Australia at that time was really new. Yep. So the level wasn't, wasn't that high. Nowadays they have they have some really good guys like Levi Jones and Lacan Gillis yep. and some other Australian kids, Greg Jones. Yep. And they they are really, really good, like like high level competition world champions. Mm. But at the time there wasn't many black belts in, in Australia. Yeah. And everything was very, very new. Yep. So when I was there, the Jiu Jitsu in Australia was just starting. Starting, yeah. and I was I was happy to help people help yeah. help Jiu Jitsu to start in Australia, and I got a chance to to meet wonderful people like you and Paul yeah. and all the guys. Yeah, uh, that that would have been a great um, honor, I guess, or, or um, even privilege, because like you said, you've come here and there wasn't a great level of experience, and we could safely say you contributed to the raising that bar when you're in the clubs you're in um, by bringing such big knowledge from Brazil and your hometown to Australia. That's pretty cool, bro. And there's still guys today still rolling around. Yeah, I feel lucky. I feel lucky to Jiu Jitsu gave me a job, gave me, gave me, Jiu Jitsu gave me a different life, like yep. improving my life in so many different ways. Yep. And I was, I was paying back. Yep. Mate, that's something I'm super curious about was your next adventure with the UAE. What was that like? And what was your role over there? Oh, it was, was a challenge. <laughs> yeah. But it was a, was a totally different future. Yeah. But it was, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a easy person to adapt to different futures. Yep. And I was, I first was teaching Jiu Jitsu to kids. Yep. On the, Six and seven grade. Yep. In the public schools in in the schools in UAE. Mm. So they had jujitsu in the schools. Yeah, like jujitsu is a discipline. Wow. Uh, yeah, they teach jujitsu in the schools. That's cool. It's like jujitsu is a discipline, like mathematics or English or wow history. 
they have so to you're a school it. teacher Otherwise, essentially not go to the next day yeah i was a school teacher yep <laughs> that's so yeah. cool what man okay. i wish i had jujitsu yeah it's cool yeah yeah me too yeah <laughs> they are lucky yeah and after six months i i got opportunity to teach jujitsu on the presidential guard it's <laughs> like it's a part of the army yep and I accepted, of course. Yep. And I spent three years teaching jiu-jitsu to the presidential guard. Wow. And it was an awesome, awesome experience. That's sick. And yeah, like that is different. It was that... a, like was so, awesome. So they, like, it was, was I had to learn some things that I didn't know, like uh, uh, how to fight with knives yep. and, and and weapons. Yeah. And how how to protect people. Like I didn't I didn't I haven't done much of those things. Yep. I was like more competition, like self defense. So I, I was teaching, I was learning. Like I had chance to learn that from some people from Russia. They are really good on hand hand to hand combat and yep. knives and weapons. And yep. it was a part of Jiu Jitsu, like it's more like craft manga yep. and something like really like Russian. Yep. So I was lucky to, to learn from people who, who like they are experts on that part of fighting. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, well, I was, was I learned cool. I learned a lot and I yep. was was I had a good experience. Yep. Wow. So yeah, teaching combatives for yeah. the um, for the military, the presidential guard That's is amazing. is unreal, bro. Yes. <laughs> Did they have? Yeah. Any- I, I don't know if you guys can see it from. Uh, let me see. I got a certificate. It was uh, something really cool. Just a second. Yep. It was something really cool to show. Yep. Because that's definitely a different kind of jujitsu. Sports jujitsu, we're just tapping and it's finished. Uh, Combative starts becoming life and death, is what you're uh, teaching there. Yeah. Let's see here. That's like something really big, like yeah. Right. Oh wow! I don't know if you guys can read it. Yeah, that that's a big honor over there. Like, yep. I'm gonna read that. The presidential guard command, a rab extends its thanks and appreciation to Mr. Felipe Cavalcanti, his work carrying out tasks has been a great benefit for our country. Wow. Wow. So, yeah, That's pretty insane to have such like, an impact on the country. No many people have one of this. No. Bro. Like, <laughs> this is directly from the Presidential Guards Institute. Like, yep. And yeah, <laughs> it's, it's something that I'm really proud of. I show everyone. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely, man. I would be too. I don't have one. Do yeah, have I one? don't have one yeah, of no. those, bro. Hell no! I've played. I teach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. No, even people who have been there for like ten years, they don't have one. Like, wow. Oh. <laughs> so I'm I'm very proud. Yeah, that Absolutely. must have been a pretty special day receiving that. Yeah, it was like I, I got I got a watch too. Yep. Yep. So it was like was really special i feel i feel really i feel like really happy i was really happy about that point. yep but, yeah that's that's, insane. that's unreal yeah. and then yeah you said it would for now you've ended up in um tennessee america is that correct yeah after that i spent one year in brazil with my family yep lovely and that was something that i was i needed to spend time with family yep and i I train I train I was training a lot. I was like I got I got stronger. Yep. And I was and most important I was like relaxing. Yep. And then I moved to the United States. Yep. Firstly, my I was thinking about just coming here, fight two competitions and then come back to Brazil. But yep. then I got an opportunity for to walk here. Yep. With Gracie Barra. Yep. And then I I, I stayed, like, I stayed, I'm still here, like, four years, and I'm still here. <laughs> That's good, man. Dude, that must be, how do you find balancing that part of missing family life and stuff, you know, being a constant traveler, 
um, with jujitsu. Do you miss that opportunity to go home, bro? Uh, nowadays, I speak with my dad every week. Yep. Like, I do FaceTime with my dad every week and yep. my mom too. Yep. So it's it it's it's not that hard nowadays. Like yep. it, the beginning two thousand six when I left was really hard. Yep. But I I have my dreams and like thank God my my parents are doing well. Yep. And like they 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 got a divorce, but they they both got new partners. So yep. they they are they are fine. That's the most important. Yeah. Yeah. And like the hardest part was my nephews. I I didn't have much time to spend time with them. Yep. But uh, it's like they they will come. I will come back to see them. Yep. Like eventually. Yep. And they can come here to visit me. Yep. So yep. yeah, it's with the technology that we have now with all those apps, it mm. makes it easier. Yeah. But yeah. it's not like. I think nowadays I speak with my dad more yeah. on FaceTime than when I was there. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. It's like it's of course it's not easy, but it yep. was it was worse in the past. Now it's now it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you think this um I guess it sounds like you just take whatever opportunities come your way, but you do enjoy that quest of traveling. Do you see yourself continuing on this journey of exploring the world and coaching or do you think maybe you might have found your place you'll stay? No, I'm, I'm getting old. I'm getting old. I'm start thinking about all the things like uh, starting my own school. Yep. And have like starting have like I was traveling, I was enjoying competing. Yep. But I'm I'm thinking about about starting my own school. Yep. I don't know when it's gonna happen, but I start thinking and start to visualize that on my mind yep. Yep. and start reading about how is to have your own business because nobody from my family has a business. Like yep. my, my mother used to work for the government and yep. my dad used to work for the government. My brother and my sister work for the government in Brazil. <laughs> yep. So that's something new for our family. Yep. Yep. So yep. I'm starting to think about that because yep. getting a point that working for the people is like it's like living in my hometown like yep it's it's it's, it's not after some point you want more you yep. want to have more power of decision it's like yep. that so at the moment i'm thinking about starting my own school yeah. so cool looking for, for yeah to do that yep Fuck that so nice, mate. I think I'm still gonna do some traveling sometimes, but yep. not as much. Yep. At, at 41 years old, you start start to think about all the things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Start to settle down something, a little bit. Right? Something for the rest of my life. Right? Yep. You have a job sometimes, and jobs in. Yep. And then you have to start looking for another job. Yep. And then another job, and then another job. And sometimes you don't, don't find a job in the place you live, and you have to move to another place and bring all the furniture, all yep. looking for apartment, new friends. Yeah. And um, I, I, I don't, I don't want to keep doing that until I'm yeah. 60. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, what I think is the market, like, I feel like the gym owners, they, they are looking for younger instructors in, yep. in terms of Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. They have preference for younger, younger instructors. Yeah, right. So that's one of one one that's not the main reason, but <coughs> sorry. That's one of the reasons why I think I'm thinking about having my own job or yep. having my own place to teach. Yep. So so yeah. it's my way. Yeah, it's the yeah, it's your way, bro. Right? <laughs> what would you name your school, bro? So everybody knows what would it be called. I think Philip Cabo is a good name. I think that'll yeah. work. Too, right. honestly, bro. Yeah. You have to think about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's unreal, bro. Mate, um, yeah, that's yeah. cool. And and kids is your specialty. Is that your passion for jujitsu at the moment, bro? Yeah, I uh, like I I uh, I enjoy I enjoy all all, all classes, like kids yep. class, 
yep. uh, self defense classes, adult classes. Yep. But I have I have fun teaching kids and like it's something that I wish I had started younger. Like mm. I see most of the world champions they they started at very young age. Yeah, yeah. So if you start training jiu jitsu in young age, like if you you your body you develop your, your body you develop your brain for jiu jitsu. Mm. And I feel that in a high level competition, like extremely high level competition, I start really young. It helps a lot. Yep. It's really important. And it also like it, it, it's I read something like it's a if you don't find time to teach in something really good to your kids, mm. someone you find time to teach them something really bad. Mm. So oh, yeah. it's it's something that I try to to then to teach them not only to be a good a good a good fighter but a, a good human being yep. and like be smart because a lot, there are a lot of bad people around mm. yeah 100 it's bro. a good message to give to the younger generation too mate it's unreal mate yeah. something mate your your passion in the united for... states bro like yeah <laughs> there are yeah. some crazy people over here <laughs> I have no doubt, dude. Mate, it, your passion for competition yourself, is that still still something that fires for you, bro? Do you still get the opportunity to roll around for yourself in a competition environment? Yeah, I did a competition last month. That's right. Like, I don't compete as much because yep. of yeah, uh, because of like my injuries. I have a lot of injuries. Yep. But I like that's something that keeps myself uh fit and healthy yep, yep. Uh, apart from the injuries but yep. yeah it's it's something that i like to do sometimes i'm really enjoying no gi more than i more than gi yep and yep. and that's something that i'm trying to learn like some things that i i wasn't doing so much when i started i was yep. doing more gi and yep. not so much like locks and now i'm doing I'm doing more this part of, of Jiu-Jitsu with no gi yep. and like locks. And it's still that quest of you you want to see what happens. That's why you're out there competing. Yeah. And I think it's really cool. IBJJF, the, the International Federation of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, yep. they have like, uh, like, it's, I don't get to compete with like in that division anymore. So I compete on the Master 3. Yep. It's for competitors between 40 and 45 years old. Perfect. So I'm fighting people from my age. Yep. And from my weight division. Yep. So and that's that in the beginning it wasn't very competitive, but now it is very competitive. Yep. And it, it's it's really cool. It's yep. really, even if it's not like the main division of the sport, yep. this is still something cool and still get recognition. Yep. Yep. And it's it, I, I have been enjoying. I'm not doing like every month. I yeah. try to do every three months. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the way to keep myself healthy and fit. Yep. yep. And then challenge yourself as well at the same time. Yeah. Getting better. That's 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 awesome. That's that's a motivation. Always getting better. Uh, always always find a way to get better. Yeah. Even yeah, if yeah. I'm getting old, yep. like there is always a way to get better. Yeah. You'll be masters <laughs> masters ten or masters twelve. At some point in time, still rolling around competing against all the old boys, no doubt. I don't know that that I don't know that much. Like I BJJF only goes on to Master Seven. Oh, Master Seven, then yeah. So yeah, I feel I, I I'm not gonna compete forever, but yep. I, maybe I will do the whole Master Three, which is yep. like forty to forty five years old. Yep. And then I'm gonna do the Master Four, which yep. is forty five to fifty, and then I think I'm gonna stop. <laughs> like, we'll, we'll revisit this i want to be able to walk when i'm 60 <laughs> yeah. i want to be able to walk yeah. properly when i'm 60 years old <laughs> i think so that's I'm one of the downsides to go over. yeah for, for a combative sport where you've coached and trained your whole life you obviously you, you carry right, you get the injuries. couple of injuries beaten up mate what it, what what ails do you have what have you got busted up over the years for yourself Especially my lower back. I yeah. had two surgeries on oh, my fuck. lower back. Yep. On oh, the last surgery, they took one disc off. Yep. 
and they replace it for another disc, but this disc is made by titanium. So yeah, it doesn't wow. break anymore. Yep. And, and I have I have been having a lot of problems on my shoulders and yep. knees are always bad, but yep. uh, that's that's the um, something nice about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu because you still can keep going. Um, yep. It's it, you find a way to keep going. The pain is not that bad. It's yep. sometimes it's really bad on my lower back. Yep. But it's it's is it's possible it's still, it's still possible to fight and i'm fighting with people who has the same age and they have probably have the same they problems have injuries too it's not that yep. i'm fighting like in the other division yep that's unreal bro i think that is one of the cool things at jits regardless of what challenges you have um when you hop on the mat there's a way to do it mm. for everybody right yeah oh we lost you bro just a second. Just, yeah, bro. Yeah, just the batteries. Let me put the recharge. Just a second. Hey, we don't want that to drop out. Yeah, I think that's one of the yeah, saying. That's one of the great things in jujitsu. It doesn't matter what what your challenge is. There's always a way for you to still train it and still progress and get better. Yeah, that's 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 something that that's different than Muay Thai and kickboxing. Yep. you don't see a lot of people doing competitions after 35 years old yep and even like all the like judo sometimes you see wrestling is really hard to see people doing competition after yep. 35 years old because mm. of the intensity and it hurts a lot mm. in jiu-jitsu you you can be effective without all that intensity yep especially it's like it's for everybody. Jiu-Jitsu in high level is not for everybody, but this, the self-defense and having fun and yeah. being able to protect yourself, it's for everybody. That's yeah. the coolest part of the sport. Mm. Uh, high level competition is, is really something that is not for everybody, yep. but you can still enjoy Jiu-Jitsu. Yep. Like it's, it's, it's the good side of the sport. Like mm. You can do it for a long time. And you don't need to be a, like a professional to enjoy jiu-jitsu. Mm. Like, there are people that go to black belt and then they never been in a competition. They shoot yeah. very good black belts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Then they just look. So I think um, when I look at jiu-jitsu, I see there's just many paths you can take on your journey at any point in time. You don't have to be a competitor. You can do it for lifestyle, and maybe at some point you might want to jump back and compete, and it'll always be a level of competition. Like even for yourself doing a master's level so you're just competing against people your age and body weight like it's just something for everybody there which is unreal yeah and it helps it it, it makes you a mentally strong person like mm. i remember doing the lockdown we had the lockdown for a little bit of time here in the united states yep. in tennessee and i remember that the fact that i had jiu-jitsu in my life and i was jiu-jitsu not only trained my body trained my mind for hard Yep. hard moments and like being a, in a bad spot and always like being able to like in jiu-jitsu sometimes you get in a, in a bad spot you have to find a way to escape it yep and, and that's what happened to me during the lockdown the gym was closed i wasn't making any money yep. and i said man i have to find a way i have to find a way to make money and pay the bills and th then i start doing deliveries during the lockdown yeah, it no. was like i was making a, lots of more money like because no one wanted to get out of the house they were afraid of the virus yep, yep. and i was doing these deliveries for all the eats and i was making like 200 250 dollars a day oh, wow. so i couldn't teach because the gym was closed yep but the restaurants were not they, they all open for takeout yep so I, I find a way. I, I see jiu-jitsu everywhere in my mind. Like yep. whenever I'm, I'm in a bad situation, yep. if I get nervous, it's, it's worse. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. harder to find an escape in jiu-jitsu in life if you get nervous. You have to relax and find the right stretching and right strategy to yep. get out of that bad spot that you are. Yep. And that's, that's something I apply, I apply jiu-jitsu in all aspects of my life. Yeah. It just not only trains your body, but it trains yeah. your mind to 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 life to escape from bad situations. 
Yeah, I understand. Wow. That's something yeah, I love it. pretty well. <laughs> teaches you how to be able to escape from bad situations mm-hmm. and make, create them as good situations. You just get really good at doing yeah, that. I feel, like, I feel like people who, yeah, I feel like people who push harder in some sports, not only jiu-jitsu, but like even like weightlifting or, or like wrestling, people who, who, who push harder and put themselves in bad spots and still try to push harder, they they get mentally strong. Mm-hmm. They, 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 they they get fit. They they it's it's like I have been I have been following a lot Dave Goggins. Yep. And he talks a lot about that, about getting mentally strong to struggle. Yep. So and that's all Jiu Jitsu is all about. Getting better through struggles during tough times. Fuck I like that, bro. Mate, towards the end here, what we like to do is ask you 10 questions. They are very random okay. and they are rapid fire. Are you ready? Okay. What yeah. would you like to overcome? Excuse me? What fear would you like to overcome? That's a good question. <laughs> Hard fear I would like to overcome. But I don't have anything on my mind right now. I don't feel a lot of things. I yeah. always try to go over my fears. I don't know. I, I'm sorry, Johnny. I don't have I don't have a uh, answer for you right now. You are fearless, mate. Your best friend has been kidnapped. I try not to be. Your best friend has been kidnapped. You have to deliver them the ransom money by car. What music are you listening to while you're driving? Uh, Puff Daddy, come at me. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> what did you think you would be when you left school? When I left school, I was already doing jiu-jitsu, so I thought I would be a jiu-jitsu instructor. <laughs> and you're still doing it. Fuck, that's Brilliant. the best, bro. What new skill would you like to learn? What new skill? I would like to play music. I'm really bad. Yes. <laughs> what makes you grumpy? A lot of things makes me grumpy, but I think it's low drivers and lazy people makes me grumpy. Very grumpy. What do you watch on Netflix right now? Barbarians Rising. Cool. Most proud moment. Yeah. Most proud moment was most proud moment. I think when I went to Amsterdam, I was really proud of myself. And something that my brother said I would never do it. I would never, I'll never get out of my hometown. Yep. And Amsterdam was always a cool place that I have in my mind. And yep. I, when I was there for the first time on the center station, I feel really proud. I say, hey, I was right and he was wrong. Yeah. And the day I got that certificate from the, from the presidential guard. Yeah, of course. And yeah, the, the day I got, I won, I won my first competition. Yep. And yeah, there's some like really special days in my life. That's unreal, bro. Now you're about to be given a boat. What are you going to name your boat? Uh, it's the name of my dog, Maker. Maker. Love that. That's cool. Who is the messiest yeah. person you know? The messiest person I know. This person I know. I think, I think he's my brother. He's <laughs> really messy. <laughs> really what is the smelliest <laughs> smell the worst smell you've ever smelled uh, i went i went for a training in a gym here mm-hmm. so like it's called a Nashville mma yep. and I, I don't think they clean that place very much <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible <laughs> so yeah, they they 
they don't clean their place very much. I think like when I went to the to the toilet over there was the worst smell of my life. It's sort of so it's, it's the, some of this the DTS gene I have been in all countries. I have been and I have been in a lot of countries. In a lot of gyms. So yeah, is that place oh, is <laughs> Bro, mate, that's our 10. Bro, thank you so much. Um just give yourself a quick shout out if people was my pleasure. What, if people want to know more about yourself or jiu-jitsu, where can they find you on uh, Instagram or Facebook? Yeah, um, my Instagram is Felipe C E B J J, and and my Facebook is Felipe Cavalcanti. Yeah, yeah, I don't have a, I don't have a, uh, I don't have my own gym. I teach, I teach for other people. I'm teaching for Gracie Bar right now, mm-hmm. but um, I'm. I'm thinking about having my own place, but at the moment, just Instagram and Facebook. Sweet. Mate, no, for sure. We'll put it up. So everyone can uh, have a look and give you a follow and follow your journey. Thanks, bro. Really good to catch up with you, man. Yeah. Let's, uh, next Thank time. Thank you. We'll it was my you. pleasure. You'll have your own and club. It was, no was, was, was really good to see Johnny again. Yeah. And, and like, Lovely to meet you, brother. Guy, guy had, this guy is special. He's, he, 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 he was my student in Australia who showed most of the education and he did better in competition and he always show respect for the class always have questions always trying to get better and that's 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 some of some kind of people that i like some of some kind of student that every instructor instructor like to have in class he Absolutely. pushes himself to be better and he pushes everyone around him to be better too so yeah that this guy over there yeah. Uh, he's special to me. He is the best, mate. Thanks, bro. Thank you so much. It was awesome to see you again, bro. We'll talk to you soon, talk hey? soon brother. Yeah, thank you. Have yeah, a good time. Okay. See you, bud.